It is 5.30, so let's go ahead and get started. we we'll start tonight with the uh, Budget and Administration Committee, Chairman Tessel. All right. Bill number 44-23A, appropriation of $12,000 from the Zero Three Five County Council. I believe Ms. Newman Drake. Okay. Um, this this uh, $12,000 is to replace the anonymous grant that we returned to the donor because of issues to, uh, of transparency uh, for the mosquito spray used to fight equine encephalitis. So this money will come from the general fund and it will revert, revert back to the fund if it isn't used this year. Any questions or comments? Good. Contractual services, that'll be our line and our budgets. So do we have it in our... We don't have it in our budget now, right? We'll do an additional... What's that? We don't have it in there now. We don't have it in there now. So we'll appropriate it, put it in that fund? That's the idea. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. Mark, may I have a motion on Bill 423A? Motion to approve there. Second. All right. I have a motion to approve. A second. Uh, all opposed in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. 44. The favorable recommendation. 4423B, transfer of $3 million to Department 0040 commissioners. Oh, are you handling this? You want me to? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Later on. During the capital planning process, uh, there were some projects that were not able to be paid for within the American Rescue Plan process. Projects involved in facilities work in this building that is important and recommended that the commissioners ask that you take $3 million that is currently budgeted in the income tax fund that economic and development income tax and instead of paying health insurance pay for facilities repairs uh, facilities renovations instead so you might ask what's going to happen to health insurance so the 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 brother sister bill asks that you additionally appropriate that same three million dollars in the general fund why because we've got this positive report from the treasurer that we're going to be bringing in um, more money than we expected from the investment returns from the treasurer's department. And therefore, John, I think we'll agree that we can afford the $3 million additional being paid in the general fund for health insurance. 3 million, 12,000. I think it's just 3 million. Oh, 12,000, yeah. Good point, from so the prior bill. So we're at 3 million, 12,000, right? Additional. And so remind me what these projects are for again. What are, the, the list includes moving voter registration down to the clerk, creating a new conference room for the courts, moving IT to the fourth floor, and remodeling the auditor's office where IT currently exists. We don't know that it's going to cost $3 million. It doesn't. Uh, we hope it does. What was it? In modeling the existing IT space in the back of the auditor's office. Coming to you by way of capital planning under the commissioner's request. You know which conference, which courtroom, or which courthouse? The, um, I don't. So Mike isn't here. What, one of the judges, a couple of the judges, have asked that they have an additional uh, conference room. In addition to what they have, and I don't actually know what they have. We had a meeting, if I can. No, okay. It's your bill. <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but you knew where the money was coming from. Okay, better than I there you go. We had a meeting over in the courthouse uh, looking at the law library. And how could that be suitable for getting ideas from people as to accommodating uh, the, addition, the voter registration people in that space? Uh, the judges were there. And they said, gee, if you're going to do that, we need some additional conference space. This does not preclude all the work that we're contemplating in the county city building uh, when the city moves out. Three floors to uh, reallocate and use more efficiently. Uh, but in the interim, while that's occurring, we do have some needs that should be addressed. And uh, we'd like to do that in the most cost-effective uh, manner. I certainly agree that three million uh, way should be way more than is needed. Uh, but we didn't want to have to come back to you uh, repeatedly. 
asking for more money. We discussed this in capital planning, correct? And we talked about how the, the movements of these departments are going to create efficiencies. So that's kind of what we're working towards here. I still have some concern with the voter registration operations and even the public clerk's operations being stuck in the basement of the courthouse and, and causing the public to go down the, the long hallway the tunnel and into the courthouse when fourth floor made a lot more sense for public access for any records or that's just well I, I I understand what you're saying the long but I brought hall. that up in the yeah is there something we can do with signage maybe as part of this three million dollars to certainly need to try to look at that help people find where they need to go they have a whole extra set of security to go through too yeah. by going down the hallway and into right. the courthouse. I think they where they take the cell phones. As long as you I think the clerk would like to not be located down there. And maybe that as we look at what can be done with the county city building long term, maybe that could be accommodated. Is that that's why I'm not interested in not spending a lot of money. I know three million dollars isn't a lot of money, but keeping that down to a as low a figure as we can, just making those changes that are necessary uh, plus, right now. Plus this year, I understand they moved, they put the, they moved the ballot room to the, the former voter registration. This, so the ballots will be stored there during election time. So, but this truly really makes makes sense because it's closer to where the work is done on election. <laughs> well, it's not close to the clerk's office, no. but nonetheless, what I'm saying is IT couldn't move in there as long as the ballots are in there. That's would be my understanding. I think that would be some concern I would have. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. All right, hearing none, I'm going to have a motion on bill number 44 down to 3B. Motion approved. Council. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. To have a okay, probably need to call those things that are in the moment. I think yeah. that okay, that's for sure. All right, show of hands then. All those in favor of bill number 44 23B. You don't vote unless there's a tie. Oh, <laughs> All right, that's great. All those opposed, looks like there's a tie. I vote. Okay. All right, very thank you for that. All right, so something with that is being number 4423C, $3 million appropriation. Commissioner, <laughs> you've already okay. spoken about we that. So this goes with it. All right, so we need a separate vote. So all those in favor of 4423C, mm -hmm. need a motion. I'm sorry. Motion in favor. Second. All right, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Aye. All right, and vote. All those in favor? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Got to wait. All those. Oops. Oh. And his name. All right. As I. I'm sorry. As I. Both of those were sent favorable. Both three. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, bill number 45 23, salary amendment department 0012 assessor. Good evening, uh, Mike Castlon, the county assessor. The office is located on the uh, third floor of this building. Uh, so, so bill number 4523 goes hand in hand with uh, bill 4623, bill 4423. Uh, this is coming from my sales disclosure fund. I have two, currently two employees being paid out of the sales disclosure fund. I'm asking to uh, raise one of those positions because they're filling a super, supervisory position. So we're going to raise that up. Uh, in those positions, and then so we're going to raise that one salary from forty-eight thousand two hundred to fifty-two thousand three hundred sixty-three, uh, and then eventually this will go over to the uh, next year to the uh, uh, reassessment cumulative fund. Questions or comments from the council? All right, hearing no questions or comments, may I have a vote on bill number forty-five dash twenty-three? All right, and a second, please. Say it. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. 
application. All right, I'm going to read these two together. Bill number 46 test 23, salary amendment, department's control and assessor, and 44.3D, appropriation budget reduction, $52,363.0012, assessor. All right, so this is a, is a budget neutral request where we're eliminating another uh, part time position and taking the uh, $20 an hour that's assigned to that part time position and splitting in amongst two other part time positions, making it $30 an hour so we can attract uh, higher quality uh, certified personnel for those positions. All right, questions or comments from the council? Motion. Motion to approve council and a second. Second to send the paper. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Uh, bill number 43 23. I'm sorry, bill number 46 23. You can pass it. You did that. It's, 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 I'm 47. sorry. 40, 47. 47 23. Mm -hmm. All right. So we, so we just pass those two. So we're on the bill. 47 23, correct? Yes. Okay. So those pass favor. 46 23 and 46 23 D in favor of it. 47-23, salary amendment department 0012 assessor and 44-23D appropriation of $55,910-0012 assessor. Petitioner. That's the one we just discussed. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. And that was just past paper. Just past We have number 47. We have 46. Yeah, so, so the confusion was 4523, the original bill, is, 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 is an appropriation. You can't appropriate from the fund, as, as, and, and you have to take it from somewhere. Does that make any sense? You can't, you just can't take money from, from one place and, not, and pay another place. So because this is the, re, the sales disclosure fund, the money's there. We just uh, need to take the money from there and apply it to the position. John, you want to expand a little bit? Is the budget in one fund, the sales disclosure fund, but that has lower cash reserves than the cumulative capital re redevelopment or assessment fund, which has a lot higher reserves. So we're putting it in the fund that has the higher reserves. And that's where we're going to budget it next year. That's my plan. That makes sense because that fund has been increasing in the recent years. Um, so that's a wise move to make. So that confuses the other two we just discussed. So you pass the other two um, adjustments. One's a salary adjustment of 52000 and the other one is taking a part-time position and eliminating it. We've already passed both, of, both sets favorably. Well, we passed 45 and 46. I'll make a motion to send favorably Bill 47 23. Second. 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 All right. All those in favor say aye. All right. right. 4723. I'll make a motion to send 4423. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed to me. 4423. 3823F. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to engineering and transportation, Chairman Thomas. Uh, thank you. Bill number uh, 4423G, appropriation 1.8 million, 0064 IPG. I think Mr. The petitioner, Mr. Matters. Right there, right right yeah. there he is. Sky Matters, the structure planning and growth offices on the 7th and 11th floor. What this item is, is to appropriate money uh, that was approved last year by the Redevelopment Commission from the, one of the new Carlisle TIFs for the renovations and improvements at the North uh, Liberty Garage, North New Carlisle Garage. Uh, that was uh, asked by the Redevelopment Commission last year, and I didn't get it appropriated last year. So I'm coming before you now to appropriate that money so that we can uh, 
continue on with the repairs and, and upgrades to that garage out in New Park Lot. Any questions for Mr. Matters? Can you briefly tell us what kind of repairs we're looking at? What uh, one of the main repairs that will be going on out there is we'll be putting radiant heat into the uh, quote unquote garage or storage area. Uh, our trucks take a heavy beating, not just from the plowing, but when we put them away and there's it's frozen. There's not radiant heat, that ice just tears them apart, tears wire carriages out and everything. And we end up doing a lot of repairs for that. There is some structural repairs to the building that need to be done. I don't know off the top of my head because there's three different garages in the package. I think we might be doing a, a, a roof out there and a bath, the restrooms. And uh, there's some other repair, I think some of the electrical work out there. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, having no any more having no more questions, you may have a motion on the bill number forty four twenty three D. Second. Okay, all in favor to move forty four twenty three. Say aye. Aye. All opposed, say no. Bill number forty four twenty three G moves to the council with positive recommendation. Thank you. Chairman Thomas, and next up will be the Human Services Criminal Justice Committee. Chairman Gray. Right. Um, bill number 4423H, the appropriation of $97,010.85. Chair Fishner. Uh, Steve Noonan, Executive Officer for the St. Joseph County Police Department, uh, offices at 401 West Sample. This represents a reimbursement from the Penn Harris Madison School Corporation and the South Bend Community School Corporation for. Um, SRO program. The uh, we would like to appropriate part into information technology, which we are going to use to replace batteries for our portable radios. Um, we purchased those in 2019. The shelf life for a rechargeable battery, the nickel cadmium batteries, is about four to five years. We've got some that are failing. Uh, and those run $140 each. And generally we have two for each officer and we have 124 portable radios. Um, the next part is continuing to, um, for supplies is to continue to get ballistic shields. Um, we're trying to get as much, many out on the street as we can. We had an incident a few weeks ago where we had uh, up near the toll road and at that time we were a little bit short in getting them there we got them there eventually but we'd like to expand that more uh be happy to answer any questions questions i have one actually um what are what are ballistic shields that's they're heavier than what uh bulletproof vest would be they're actually the officers can get behind them and protect their heads all the way down to their um, to their thighs and they will stop rifle rounds other rounds uh, the ballistic vests that we wear uh, commonly will not stop a high power rifle round or even some high power um, hand handgun ammunition um, it's just a safe place in, if in this situation, this individual was out on the Notre Dame golf course, we couldn't get any vehicles near him. And this is a way for officers to negotiate from at least for some protection. Many of those shields are in this number. I'm sorry, what? How many of the shields are in this number? Yes, that there, there would be probably, we're hoping to get uh, eight to 10. We're looking at two different brands right now, and we're um, actually have another presentation coming from another shield manufacturer. Questions? I have a motion. Move this out favorably. Second. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Opposed? 4423H passes with favorable. Committee or to uh, bill Thank number. You. Thank you. 
Bill number 4423I, budget reduction of 68,038, probate court petitioner. I'm the Matthew Stavridge, Executive Director, CASA Program of St. Joseph County, and we are located at the um, Juvenile Justice Center. This is a budget reduction request as our um, program didn't receive a grant that we had applied for in 2022. Um, it's a grant from the Indiana State Office of GAL CASA. We intend on applying for it this year for next year. Um, the reason that we weren't funded in 23 for it is because we had too much carry forward in 2022. 22 into 23. Um, we experienced some difficulty hiring a qualified staff person, but the position is full uh, now and we are utilizing those funds. Any questions? Second. All in favor? Bill number 4423, I passed the recommendation to the council. Bill number 4423J, an appropriation of 75,000 for the probate court. Commissioner? Carol Rush, controller at the uh, St. Joseph Probate Court, 1000 South Michigan. Uh, this is an appropriation of 75,000. We're asking, uh, it's the VASA grant that runs through the court for the real services program that runs a adult guardianship with this money. Any questions, Commissioner? Get a motion. Second. All, all, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill number 44.3J is a full recommend, uh, favorable recommendation to the full council. Mm -hmm. Number 44.23K, an appropriation of $23,981.94 probate court. This is also for CASA. Um, this is a Victims of Crime Act or VOCA grant. It's a supplemental grant that we were encouraged to apply for. When we uh, applied for VOCA for 2022-2024 cycle, most uh, recipients, their budgets were cut because VOCA didn't realize that they probably would have enough money to fully fund everyone's request. So um, they cut our budget and then they asked us to turn around and apply for the money that they cut. And we received it in full and we're asking to appropriate this. Um, it does cover the um, insurance benefits in full for the three people that are paid via VOCA. And there is no county match on this grant whatsoever. Uh, the grant is about a $400,000 grant. Any questions? Okay. Motion. All in favor? Opposed. Bill number 4423K goes to the whole uh, to a favorable recommendation. Bill number 4423L, an appropriation of $715.37 probate court. Also, also um, this is a leftover pilot grant. We uh, uh, are carrying it forward from 22 into the current year, and it will be utilized this year, and that grant will be complete. Questions? Can I get a motion? Motion in favor of council. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, bill number 4423L moves to the full council in favorable recommendation. Bill number 4423M, an appropriation of 23,500 probate court. Bill Rush, St. Joseph Probate Court. Uh, this is the family court grant that we've had for a few years that's um, helped with emergency housing and different programs and special training for the court. Any questions? Okay, no motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Bill number 4423M moves to the full council in favor of the recommendation. Mm -hmm. Um, bill number 4923, salary amendment, uh, probate court combined with appropriation of, combined with bill number 4423N, an appropriation of $64,304.67. This uh, kind of addresses the very first budget reduction. It's actually uh, us carrying forward for 2022 into 23 
the grant that we were unable to utilize fully in 22. So we are uh, requesting that 64,000 be carried forward. The position is filled, it's being utilized. The funds will exhaust at the end of 23. We will reapply for this grant. Uh, probably, usually the grant comes out November or something like that. We'll reapply and more than likely get that grant for 24. And this is nothing that needs to be matched by the county. Questions? I get a motion on bill number 4923. Is that favorable? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Bill number 4923 goes to the full council uh, with favorable recommendation and bill number 4420. You get a motion for that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Bill number 4423 then also goes to the full council favorable recommendation. Um, bill number 4423 has been removed by the petitioner. Can I get a motion to remove it from the agenda? That's a point of order. Is that correct? Yeah, I think that's a proper protocol. Can get a motion to remove it from the agenda? I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Bill number 5023 combined with bill number 4423P, a salary amendment in the health department with the transfer of $22,250 also has been removed by the petitioner. Can you get a motion to remove it from the agenda? Motion removed. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? To the American Rescue Plan Fund in the Budget Administration Committee, Chairman Temple. So, in the 5123 appropriation in budget reduction in 14,628 from 0040 auditor. Um, I did this reduction when we tallied the final. Total on the American Rescue Plan, we were actually oversubscribed by 114,628. We reduced 80,000 in the, the lobby, the lobby remodel project came in about 80,000 under budget, came in at under 320,000. So that's 80,000. And then 34,000, it's the miscellaneous COVID expenses that occur during the year for sanitized napkin. You know, masks and so forth. And that's running at a pretty modest amount. So we, we can cut that budget by 34,628 and still have enough for our department to use during the year. So 114,628 reduction. And then that means the American Rescue Plan has all been uh, obligated. Questions, comments from the council? I think the Senate favorable. Second. Good. All in favor say aye. Aye. Land use planning, Chairman This president, Bill number 39 23, tax abatement, petitioner AM General. I'm Terry O'Brien from the Economic Development Department on the 12th floor. Um, I'm here to talk to you about AM General LLC. They have submitted a tax abatement request for real and personal property. Uh, the intent of this project is to allow them to expand their building and purchase additional equipment. Uh, this property is located within the AM General Economic Development Area area, and AM General is a designated tax Petitioner has recently been awarded a contract with the federal government to produce a military vehicle. They call this military vehicle a joint like tactical vehicle. They plan to expand plant number two, which is located at 13200 McKinley Highway. Um, they plan to invest approximately $8.8 .8 million into the building by adding 74,040 square feet 
This will double the square footage of plant number two. Uh, they also plan to invest $59.5 million in personal property. The personal property will allow them to uh, install 32 uh, mainline assembly stations. The contract that they have with the military is a five-year contract, and then it has five one-year options. To fulfill the contract, they need to produce 20,000 628 of these vehicles and to produce 9,883 trailers. The total value of the contract is $8.66 billion. Uh, this project will help AM General retain their current uh, staffing levels. Currently, they, according to their SB1, they have 371 employees. And in between now and 2026, they plan on adding 329 additional. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. And I believe there's people here at DM General that would also be able to answer questions if you have it. So, Todd Leahy and Mark Minnie from AMP. Any questions? Mark, yes, Minnie. Yes. Your HR. Uh, yes. How do you feel um, in terms of workforce? You guys deal with the workforce you need up and running. Yeah, I feel enough workforce, feel a little new job coming in. Yeah, so we're, you know, we have the blessing of having a workforce that on average has 20 years of building vehicle experience, so we've got a good strong core that we're going to be able to leverage then as we bring new workers on board. Uh, we've had experience when we uh, launched the Mercedes R class here a couple of years back on the commercial side of the house. We had to staff that facility up, so we've done this before. So we think with the management and the workforce and our partnership with the UAW we got now, we feel confident we will execute this plan. Do you have any idea on the migration or out migration of employees where you guys are at in terms of St. Joe County employees, your core group versus? Other areas? No, I don't. I can't tell you how many of our employees that are working in St. Joe County come from Alcorn. Do you think the majority of them? Do? Well, you, so the majority of our workforce has been with us for 20 plus years. <laughs> so it's been a pretty stable workforce. We haven't, uh, the team that's with us now has been here for a while. So I, I really don't know the makeup of what county they live in. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I have a motion. Please. Second. Favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Do you guys need 52 homes at time? No. <laughs> All on property. Yeah. We'll, we'll be do the plans and The next one, we're going to, it's going to be a little bit out of order tonight. So number, number two is going to be bill number 22-23, establishing the Indian Enterprise Center Overlay Zoning District Petitioner St. Joe County Area Plan Commission. Thank you. Oh, here we are. I was looking for it. John Klein, Area Plan Commission staff with offices on the 11th floor of this building. Um, so this is a portion of the IEC overlay um, district, which was previously under consideration. Uh, specifically, these are the portions of the overlay uh, to which we've already achieved broad consensus from the, the state uh, relevant stakeholders involved, um, such that it doesn't really warrant any um, further discussions. So we're comfortable moving forward with a portion. Uh, we're continuing to work out other phases um, wherein we're still trying to get uh, consensus from the development community and the chamber uh, specifically related to building form and building articulation, as well as some other um, development standards. Uh, but we, what we're comfortable moving forward with are the um, primary and prohibited uses, uh, the um, Western buffer and landscape requirements related to that Western buffer and um, landscape requirements for flagship developments, those being developments over 150 acres or uh, 500,000 uh, square feet, uh, as well as uh, native landscaping environments. So 
Uh, turning to the um, primary and prohibited uses, or uh, uh, expressly prohibiting uses such as slaughterhouses, sewage treatment plants, mining, junkyards, metal scrap shredders, landfills, coal and nuclear power plants, as well as a series of um, defined heavy industrial uses. And again, we have um, uses that are primary uh, special uses as well as accessory uses as before. And turning to landscaping, um, we are moving forward with the, the regulations related to native landscaping. Uh, these would require at least 50% of the trees provided on site to be um, either native Indiana species or cultivators, as well as 50% of any uh, flowering plants used on site. Um, additionally, if turf grass is provided, um, islands of uh, native grasses or wildflowers will need to be provided at a rate of 5% the area of that turf grass. We are also um, proposing a western boundary along the western edge of the core development area. Uh, this would be a boundary and buffer that's um, 50 feet in width, and it would require one tree per every 35 feet, uh, feet of that width. It's similar to a written commitment that is currently on the Redevelopment Commission property on the western edge, except this would apply to the entire core development area as opposed to that written commitment, which is confined specifically to that site. Um, in addition to this, we have um, fencing screening related to chain link fences. Um, we're now providing chain link as an option in the front yard. It will need to be set back um, 50 feet and then screened with trees and shrubs. And we have landscaping requirements for these uh, flagship parcels and buildings that um, require landscaping in excess of the uh, current zoning ordinance in terms of the planting materials. Um, so this would apply to the core development area, uh, specifically to properties that are already industrial, industrially zoned. Um, this fulfills one of our obligations under the resolutions that were passed by the, the County Commission, the Redevelopment Commission, the Town of New Carlisle and Olive Township, um, specifically to determine appropriate uses for the IC core development area. We will have to come back with that second phase where we go into more depth with the development standards related to um, the site and the building, uh, and that will fulfill the, uh, the second um, obligation that we have under that resolution. Uh, this comes to you from the Area Plan Commission with a favorable recommendation, a vote of eight to zero, and we received um, 12 members of the public speaking in support of um, this version of the overlay at the APC meeting, um, no one spoke in opposition and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Motion to move the council for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion to We'll take that as favorable. Right, you know, favorable, favorable. Favorable. Yeah. Favorable. Yeah. Favorable. Yeah. favorable. Number three, I'll remind you next. Thank you. Bill number 23-23, designate the Indiana Enterprise Center Overlay District Petitioner Area Plan Commission. Yeah, Sean Klein once again. This goes hand in hand with the, the one we just discussed. Um, the previous one was the actual text amendment, and this will be the ordinance that applies it to the IEC core development area. Uh, it also comes with a favorable recommendation. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Can we do one tonight? No. That, no. We'll no. go back to that. Oh, wanted, to oh yeah. So that was 22 and I was going to do it. Gotcha. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a motion? This is a favorable. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion passes. Next one is bill number 159-22, terminate written commitments concerning the rezoning property located north of State Road to Petitioner Ken Sebastian Senior, Lane Sebastian, and Ken Sebastian Junior. Hey, Abby Wiles, APC Director, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth, offices on 7th and 11th floor. Thank you for amending the agenda this evening uh, to hear these two bills after the IEC overlay. When we explain what's going on, it'll make a whole lot more sense 
the, since you just heard the overlay district. Uh, the first petition is a modification of written commitments that were assigned to a rezoning that went through in 2020. That uh, was a rezoning for property owned by the Sebastis that included written commitments that one, restricted the uses on the site, and two, required the preservation of two identified forested wetlands on the property. The use restrictions uh, we just covered when Sean presented the IEC overlay, uh, rather than having individual properties that have written commitments for uh, rezonings, the overlay establishes use restrictions for the whole core development area, which is preferable than having one-off uh, restrictions and written commitments. The second commitment is preservation of the two identified forested wetlands. The petitioners uh, are requesting to modify this uh, and I provided to Jen Frey Watt what the petitioner is proposing to replace, but rather than have the uh, area along State Road 2 uh, be remain agricultural, petitioners requesting that the language be changed to should remain undeveloped. Uh, after the 2020 rezoning, the Redevelopment Commission retained uh, Cardno, now Stantec, right, to do a uh, field delineation to determine if that area was actually a wetland. It was found that it didn't meet the three parameter test and it's not legally a wetland as defined by the Army Corps of Engineers. The area to the Northwest shown in blue is a wetland and will continue to be a wetland. Um, the Redevelopment Commission in good faith to allow the removal or the change of language for the area along State Road 2 is agreeing to provide a green set aside in the same acreage as what the wetland on state, or not wetland, but the forested area on State Road 2 is, but to be preserved up where the, the wetland is at the northwestern part of the site. I think it's up closer to those um, residential areas on Wintergreen and that way. Yes. That way. So really, we uh, remove the language shall remain agricultural to should remain undeveloped. And then the Redevelopment Commission provides the additional green set aside at the Northwestern part of the property in good faith to show uh, that we are dedicating green space and natural space within the core development area of the IEC. Um, this comes, uh, this came from, uh, with a favorable recommendation from staff, a favorable recommendation from the Area Plan Commission, eight zero and one uh, person spoke in favor of it. Any other questions for Abby? <clears throat> if not, I retain a motion. Motion to move favorable to council. Second. Uh, motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, move and pass. <laughs> Yeah. Bill number 160-22, terminate written commitments concerning the rezoning property located at 56340 and 56458 at Willow Road and 31917 State Road 2, Petitioner, St. Joe's County Development Commission. Abby Wiles, APC Director. So similar to the prior uh, written commitments that we discussed, this rezoning also had written commitments assigned that included language that was very similar to the written commitments covered in the last petition. It included the same use restrictions that are now addressed through the IEC overlay. <clears throat> and it also included the preservation of legally delineated wetland. To the extent it contains a wetland, it should not be used for an industrial use. There are no wetlands on this property. Uh, the petitioner has stated that it clouds title to have it on. And then as Sean discussed in the um, presentation for the IEC overlay, this set of written commitments specifically because it has frontage along Willow had a uh, requirement that it includes an 80 foot wide landscape buffer as measured from the center line. The IEC overlay takes that and applies it 50 feet from the property line. So we end up 10 feet to the good. And then we still have the uh, tree requirement, one tree for every 35 feet on center. So uh, the petitioner in this case, rather than requesting a modification of the terms is requesting an outright termination of the written commitments. Happy to answer any questions. I'm sorry, did you, did you uh, say um, how it came from the commission? 
Oh, I apologize. Yeah, it also came through the APC with favorable recommendation eight zero and one uh, member of the public spoke in favor. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I have a motion. Move to the favorable. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passed. Next one, bill number 41-23, land vacation from Green Street, Redwood Avenue, Petitioner, Deborah Kuchowski. Abby Wiles, APC director. <laughs> this is a alley vacation uh, that was submitted by Deborah uh, Glukowski. Staff finds that it meets all the criteria for a, uh, the, a vacation. A number of the east west alleys in this immediate area have been vacated. Uh, in looking at the state code criteria to approve a vacation, uh, there are no objections from staff. And I believe a total of 15 notices went out. 12 notices, excuse me, and we received no comment. I'm happy to answer any questions. What was the vote? Oh, this comes straight to you. It doesn't oh, go right. through area plan. Any other questions? Have a motion. Yeah, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, I apologize. The petitioner isn't here. Oh, okay. I thought I thought I saw one. You can hear. Oh, wonderful. Hi, Deborah. Hi. <laughs> Any questions? Comments they want to you want to make yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, do you have any questions? I do not. All right. Okay. Thank you. I have a motion. Motion is unfavorably. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed. <laughs> Next one, bill number 42 23 rezoning for property located at 12525 Anderson Road from our single family to O Office District, Petitioner Miller Family Development Company. Good evening. I'm Carl Brown Grimm, Area Plan Commission staff. Uh, what we have here today is the petitioners requesting to rezone the slot here on the corner of Bittersweet and Anderson from our residential to O Office. Uh, they plan to build a single story office building. Um, in 2003, the site was rezoned from residential to office uh, for a similar use, same office building. Um, however, there have been issues with a deed restriction on the title that exists kind of outside the scope of Area Plan Commission, uh, restricted uses to residential um, buildings only. Um, at the Area Plan Commission, the petitioner indicated that they're working through this uh, and they are about to have it satisfied. Um, because of this, the site remained undeveloped until it was rezoned back to our uh, single family in 2016 um, to meet that deed restriction. However, the site still has remained undeveloped, likely because of the traffic experience on Bittersweet and uh, To the west and the south are residential subdivisions. Uh, to the east is a fire station, and then to the north is a manufacturing industrial use. Uh, and beyond that, kind of as you go up Bittersweet, there's more industrial and commercial uses along there. Um, there you can see the site as a vacant lot. Uh, that's the intersection that's uh, pretty heavily trafficked uh, and there's bittersweet looking north. Uh, this is the proposed building style the petitioner submitted with the plans. Um, it looks very similar sort of in character to residential um, kind of office mix. Here's the site plan. Uh, it shows a 6,400 square foot office building. Uh, they'll be required to meet uh, all landscaping requirements as well as Type one open landscaping uh, along that west property line that abuts the residential uh, property. Uh, the site plan also does show for two accesses onto Bittersweet and Elm, or sorry, not Bittersweet and Anderson. Uh, at the uh, March 21st APC meeting, uh, the Area Plan Commission uh, approved four variances um, a primary building, uh, accessory building, and a parking area and a rear setback, and then as well as that access and the side setback abutting a, uh, abutting a residential property. In addition, the Area Plan Commission voted uh, eight to zero to forward this with a favorable recommendation. 
Uh, we had one person speak in favor of it, uh, one person spoke in remonstrance, but they were more commenting on the speed of traffic along Bittersweet as opposed to the actual project. Uh, we did, however, receive three letters of remonstrance from uh, neighbors who live in a nearby subdivision on Sharon Court. Um, staff finds this consistent with a comprehensive plan. Uh, it promotes the development and of the community and the neighborhood character because it's been a vacant site for so long. Uh, it meets the current conditions and character. The site's a, a mix of residential and commercial and industry. Uh, the high traffic has been noted. Um, and finally, uh, we think that this represents responsible growth and development as it allows for the development of the existing vacant field while it provides a nice transition between the residential and industrial areas. And if you have any questions, I will answer them now. The business behind that is Anderson Screen Porches, correct? I believe it is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dictionary Online. Uh, yeah, Terry Lang from the Whiteman Company. Uh, our address is 715 South Michigan Street in South Bend. I represent the petitioner here. Um, Carl did a good summary there of the intended use. Um, the office use is a good transition between the residential and the industrial located to the north. Um, obviously, across the street is a fire station, which is non-residential use, even though it's zoned residential. Uh, the the remonstrance at the other meeting was with regards to the speed of people on Bittersweet. Uh, that's a four-way intersection right there with stops in all directions. So that's more of a, a county police issue, more so than a zoning issue. At this location, we've located the drives as far away from the intersections as possible for safety. And we've met with the neighbor uh, to the west there and are working with the uh, developer on developing a uh, opaque fencing along that westerly property line in compliance with the county ordinances. And I'd be happy to answer any other questions that you may have. Questions, Mr. Lane? Yes, Mark. Mr. Lane, on the, I see on the western edge of your site plan, you've got the uh, drainage plan, the uh, retention basin. Is that going to be a swale or have some depth to it for the north? There'll, there'll be a little bit of depth at the northwest corner. Uh, it's going to be more of a swale type basin. Um, and then when we get into the uh, nitty gritty of the final drainage part of it. Um, there may need to be some additional underground storage, which we will develop according to the county drainage standards. You mentioned you're going to put a fence on a western property boundary, an opaque type fence. Um, you think that'll keep that area safe in terms of, say, a toddler or somebody wandered over, got onto the property in terms of the drainage ditch or the retention basin toward the northwest corner? Uh, it, the fence will uh, obviously protect that issue, but it will also, um, the soil conditions at that lo location are extremely sandy, so we're not anticipating any water standing in that uh, retention basin, probably longer than a 24-hour period after an immediate hard rain. Thank you. Mr. Lang, does the fence separating your property from the neighbor of the west does that satisfy the neighbor to the west as far as you doing this development? Yes, it, yes, it was. In fact, the, the developer, before he left to go back uh, south, um, had an in-depth discussion with them with regards to the fence. And in fact, he had been talking about putting up his own fence before this rezoning was even uh, presented. So they are both in agreement for putting the fence up down that line. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, I have a motion. Motion is in favor of both. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Lane. Thank you. Next up are bills of the Harlem Committee. First one is in the Land Use Planning Committee, Mr. Fig. Yes, Mr. Chairman, Bill number 2 23 has been asked to get stay in committee for another month. Can I have a motion to retain it for another month? So moved. No, second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Next up is the Budget Administration Committee. Chairman Chapel. Thank you, Mr. President. Bill number 28 23, Seller Amendment Department 0024 Commissioners, and Bill number 
Beckmeyer, Board of Commissioners. Light reading for you. Each one of each one of us. Each one of you gets one. So before we begin, um, I know you each received the job description. I inadvertently sent that out a little earlier. Uh, it's in your packet on the top. Talks about duties and responsibilities of this position as it's being envisioned. Let me just start by saying what it's not. This is not a replacement for John Murphy. He does an excellent job. I've known, on a personal note, I've known John for years. Uh, so our relationship transcends you know, duty and county government. Uh, it's also um, not a fourth commissioner. It is not a county executive. It is just what the job description is. Um, I will say that Perhaps the vision um, in special projects and budgeting was a little bit, might be a little reduced. We're not, this is a work in progress. Um, we've been reactionary, we feel, on the seventh floor. I haven't been in office that long, uh, but I know that um, sometimes we wait until things are out of our hands before we take action. So we're seeing this as being a more proactive. What I'm asking you today is approve a position uh, that will allow us to proactively man manage a major cost center for the county. We'll get a handle on uh, our liabilities before they become a crisis. Just to refresh our risk and liability budget is approximately $22 million per year. And the oversight of these programs has been somewhat fragmented. Uh, we've depended on outside consultants, not that they don't do a good job, um, but there's been a lot of hands on risk and liability. Um, currently, our HR director uh, has attempted to step in on numerous occasions uh, to assist with the management um, of these programs. I really feel first, HR needs to focus on its core responsibilities uh, and ensure that uh, employees are properly served. Um, we need to make sure that there's someone with sufficient knowledge and bandwidth to oversee these programs. Second, the full-time employee would cut out uh, the need to pay hourly rates. This is no reflection on Mr. Dalton or Mr. Bish, uh, but we have relied on them a lot of times because we didn't have a um, person who was able to uh, look into these, oversee this, and report back to us. Site, um, for our consultants such as JWF, Oxiant, and Gallagher um, to continue to ensure that they continue to work in the county of best interest. Now it's worth noting that most departments are overseen by the commissioners have finance clerks that have varying degrees of skill levels and need assistance from time to time. And this person would be another resource uh, for them. There are numerous, almost to the end, numerous large projects coming up that will need a point person to oversee this on a daily basis. Uh, we have capital planning projects, ARP projects, renovation of buildings, uh, 
request that was made earlier regarding the three million dollars to begin moving things around, uh, I think is a good example. Uh, we need someone to manage those projects and give better oversight uh, to the processes once they're started. A smaller portion is grant management. Um, we are, in my opinion, we do a good job um, seeking grants uh, throughout the county. Uh, but grant management is delegated to each department. There's no oversight. And uh, at the end of the year, all that has to be amalgamated. And John puts together a great report. Um, but it would be good to have somebody uh, assisting with that. Finally, the bud move, refill the move is budget neutral. Uh, the VR office was, real, was reduced by four positions. Uh, savings from the health benefits alone is approximately $80,000. The VR position funds have not been reallocated except for $16,600 uh, to cover the attorney uh, to assist with the, uh, assist the clerk and cover the election board. Then recently, uh, our, and recently, I mean yesterday, our HR benefits coordinator uh, gave notice that she's leaving her job in the private sector. Her position is $46,175. Putting all that together, uh, it more than covers the request uh, for this position uh, that we are saving. So, that. so would you be getting into that position? Uh, well, that's what I'm saying. We're, we need to restructure. And uh, whether we fully uh, remove that position or reassign some of that. Uh, Kendra, like. Kendra doesn't have Kendra? Kendra. Oh. She handles a lot of it. She does. In addition to what Kendra has. I can imagine well, not having that position. What is she leaving? Uh, give her two weeks notice yesterday. She'll be, she'll, her last day is the 6th. Her last day is the 6th. The 6th. You know, I'm glad Kim is here because she has a lot on her plate. In addition to HR duties, she, as I said earlier, she dives into a lot of these things. I really think that having her focus on HR, she can certainly assist uh, her background. She was the Kendra. Uh, before moving over to HR. So this is a person who has a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge, and uh, we don't want to lose that. But we also realize that this is a, a major portion of the county budget that flows through the seventh floor in a variety, through a variety of people. Coordinating that, especially the special projects, I think would be uh, valuable. So, uh, Commissioner, uh, I guess the first thing I would say is um, thank you very much for going back and giving us this detailed information as far as the job description. Now, you, you did say that it would be budget neutral. That's just in the first year, obviously, right? Early on that. You didn't say that. You just said that it would be budget neutral just in the first year, correct? Not really, because there are positions in VR that have been eliminated. That that is a savings going forward. What was that number? But, it's, but it still won't. Four. But it still won't be budget neutral. After yeah, I need you quoted right? a number on that. I quoted the number on uh, health benefits alone of eighty eighty thousand dollars. Okay. That doesn't include salaries. Does not include salaries. <clears throat> but if you want to. Okay. I'm not recommending that at all. Well, I, well I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, real note that um, 
for instance, last summer before I uh, became a commissioner, um, there were quite a few uh, events that occurred uh, that uh, Mr. Uh, Peter uh, had Steve and Mike uh, participate in. Uh, that, frankly, and that's why they said at several meetings, including our, our last meeting, uh, that hey, we shouldn't be paying their rates for some of these actions. Um, there'll be a savings there. Can I quantify that? You know, I've got a listing of how much was paid. Uh, yeah, I can see some things there. And to your point, Mr. Morton, uh, no, that wouldn't, well, that wouldn't be ongoing. Uh, that would be a one-time savings because we would have this person do that uh, rather than bringing our financial advisor or our county attorney. In. Well, even beyond those savings, you can't really qualify or quantify the grants, the extra grants that would be brought in by the position. But I did want to ask the question. Um, it seems like if this is going to be someone who works on special projects, kind of are in a situation right now with the full forge manager thing where, you know, we're, we're talking about our cap now from the notes I've seen. I, I haven't got a full report on what you guys are doing, but um, Mr. Dalton, what do you think? Would that, would this be a situation where this person would step in and, or would it, would maybe even before we get to, you know, as you mentioned, try to get ahead of the game on some things before we'd even get to where we are, like on Portage Manor, this person would work with state officials and try to foreseeing what we're going to need in different areas like the Portage Manor. Let me, let me put it this way, Dan. The commissioners could assign this important person to any project they wanted to. Imagine that eventually the person is also going to get very full of projects. Mm -hmm. So Portage Manor might be so specialized that it might be a little bit outside their scope, but mm -hmm. they could. The commissioners could assign this person to any project they wanted mm -hmm. to. Portage Manor is a giant challenge. It's sure. not necessarily yeah, just, just walk in the door and start turning right. it over. I was just throwing that out there because it's it's an immediate issue. And I thought well, maybe that's an example of a special project that a couple years ago it would have been something that could have made a difference. I so you mentioned that I'm sorry, sorry. So you mentioned that it would cut back on the hours of Steve and Mike Mish. Do you, but you can't really put a finger on that. I can't. It's difficult to assess. So no, I, just we looked to at the we looked at what was paid uh, for the last, last half of the year. Um, and there were some uh, projects that uh, were at, they were asked to look at uh, that, frankly, this person would have been yeah. better suited. And that's why I was surprised at one of the meetings when Steve himself said, you know, you, you don't want to pay, pay Senator Dalton at this rate when you can pay somebody at a, at a lower rate. But Mike and I are 100% for this. There, we don't need to be... Uh, handling some of the day-to-day -day projects. Somebody who's in this building can handle a lot of those projects. Well, I'm just trying to get an idea of what the cost saving. It's hard to put a finger on, really. <laughs> because when the commissioners call, we're gonna say yes, but we're gonna say, did the other guy say no already? <laughs> well, that, I mean, that goes like, are we gonna, if we're gonna continue kind of paying near or at the same rate we're paying now and at this position, it's more expensive, right? So that's my, what I'm trying to figure out. So Kendra will not be replaced if we do this, correct? I've talked to Kim. Or Kim. Kim, how do you feel we about need that to. question? If, if Kendra so, so, or that position should, should or should not be replaced. So the position of the benefits coordinator is that first response to employees, to retirees with questions, problems, issues, billing, you know, where do I go here? Here I'm having a hard time getting to find a physician. Where do I go? Put them with the network providers, the providers that we have that we give. And also, of course, part of the benefits coordination is the wellness incentives, doing things like, um, the sunburst with our clinic, um, doing things like the gym membership reimbursement, things like that also that goes into it, not just the, our, our health plan is multifaceted, okay? So we've got the clinic, the employee clinic that we run, that we pay, that we have a management group that runs it for us, but all of the bills go through us. Um, we have the ACO agreement that we have with the network, the providers. We have contracts that we have with the 
providers like our vision benefits, our dental, our flexible spending, our life insurance, things like that. Those are contracts that we have with those providers. And Kendra is that here for the employee, here for the retiree. Um, now, how the county has set up our insurance and the fundings and the programs is that we have worked with brokers and TPAs to get those best deals. Now we have in the past done a RFP to try to find another broker if we wanted to go another broker route. And we did at that time choose r, &R to continue. r, &R is now linked in with Gallagher. Gallagher is, is the one that helps us out with a lot of that. On top of our TPA who runs the medical plan in the specialty that we have it because we are self-funded. So all the bills go through the TPA from the provider, run it through our plan as we have it set up, send it to the auditors for them to pay our weekly bills to the providers and then go. So we act as our own insurer, okay, with help with the TPA, the brokers and your HR staff. So that's for the insurance. I really still need that point contact person. I think it's very important for our employees. I think it's very important for our retirees. How we have that done, restructuring can be done. I've got a small staff. <laughs> I do have a small staff, so. so you're, saying that, you're, talking you're saying that position that. needs to stay. Um, From your the functions, from your perspective. The functions need to Function. stay. That's what I'm asking. But this will take some things off your plate, right? If we did, if this. That is the goal. <laughs> right. So the other part is the liability and workers' comp, which is another area of HR, where we have a claims administrator um, and a TPA that we work with, along with brokers, to set up access coverages to keep us um, healthy in our self-funded funds. Um, so our investigator, along with the TPA, which is JWF, um, they run the claims in correspondence with our guidance, with the claims investigator that has 20 plus years in that, um, along with when we have a situation that has to pull in a county attorney, we have a county attorney that uses a, that we use for HR issues, that we pull them in. Um, so with workers' comp and liability, that is something that I could tell you, you know, what claims we have outstanding. I can tell you about the workers' comp that we have outstanding because our staff meet every week to talk about this, to make sure that we're doing what we need to, to make sure that the fund is being used properly and that we're mitigating as much as we can as far as the spend. I would like her to focus on HR. Kim is an excellent, I said that before, excellent resource. Uh, she gets into a lot of different areas. And uh, as she has said to me numerous times, uh, getting job descriptions done, the wage study done, mm -hmm. really focusing on HR. We have it. Tremendous problem. Uh, and relieving is another example of the fact that we don't uh, pay competitively. And I know we can't address that overnight, um, but as was pointed out to me uh, this morning, uh, that's one of the reasons, that's the primary reason she's leaving is a uh, better opportunity. But didn't she just say that that position she feels should be and that's not what eliminated? I, and that's what I said. We're not going to eliminate the position, we're going to look at the at the reset the functions, and Kim said it very well, the functions need to remain. And some of those would be absorbed by this person. And some of them, frankly, because of Kim's background, we may have Kim uh, do some of that. But the position itself. So the position would not probably be. not be there. I have another question about grant management. Sure. Um, I'm just concerned, is, is this going to remove oversight of and, and uh, flexibility for the departments that apply for grants? Because we have many departments that apply for grants, like adult probation, the health department, the sheriff, the JJC, CASA, 
highway yeah. department. Highway department, they're always successful yeah, in bringing money into the county that we don't have to take out of general funds. So I'd hate to see their hands be tied. Hamstrung, not be tied. In fact, uh, at the commissioner's conference last fall, um, the uh, Mike Smith, uh, the uh, Indiana Department of Transportation uh, head, uh, so a whole raft of new graph grant opportunities uh, that will be coming through the Build Back Better plan in the coming years. Uh, so that's another. This person would be able to assist Sky in that area, uh, pursuing those grants. Sky does a great job of seeking out and applying for grants. Part of the grant management, though, is just keeping the records and being ready to report uh, at grant closeout time. He's a resource. This person, he or she, would be a resource, not a not a replacement. There aren't any qualifications listed for the job, like education or experience, or you post them. You develop that with Kim's assistance and post it. We had to know that there was a, a willingness on the part of the council to fund this. Nobody in mind that can do this. There have been names that have been suggested, but Shasha Ash. I don't want to put them in a bad spot. I still question the salary amount. I know it's an ex extensive job, but it's, I would think, that one of the highest paid <clears throat> I think it's I think it's on par with other professionals. You know, the fact that we're losing people like Kendra uh, points out to the fact that you know, we don't pay competitively. Uh, this council uh, and the previous council made a concerted effort to you know, raise the salaries of um, highway engineer, or plan director, uh, redevelopment director. Um, Auditor, I would make a comment on the, the uh, bill. I was going to ask you that, sir. Um, it's, it's called the finance director, okay? And 50% of the job description talks about budgeting. Yeah, right. I so, had that question. So it's, let's, it's a finance job, 50%. And this position pays $120,000 a year. And you saw Cheryl Rush just present before you. And she has other projects too that she does with the JDC in addition to finance. And she makes $72,000 a year. And that's a $50,000 difference. And that's all the, there's no finance person above $82,000 in the county. And so that's going to put this person in a whole different sphere than everyone else. And what you may have at budget time is a lot of department heads coming in and wanting, or even before budget time, wanting to increase their salaries for their finance people dramatically. Well, you know, uh, Mr. Murphy, I, I wasn't kidding when I was just going to say, who I wanted your thoughts because Steve, you made yours clear. You made it clear for Mike Mish. And I really appreciate your comments because I'm, I was thinking along, along those same lines. Um, I'll say it one more time. I appreciate this in-depth description of the duties. Uh, we asked you to do that and you did. You did a great job. But I was very, very interested in what you would have to say. And I, because I was thinking on those same lines, 120,000. And I've been, this ain't my first rodeo as far as reaction with other department heads in similar positions. And when you look at, when you look at, you just said 70,000 versus 120. And I think, the, I think the, the seventh floor does need a finance director. Let's, I, I do, they, I do, I think that's necessary. So, but I, the salary just is such an outlier that I, I don't see how that's not going to affect other departments. And it will cause morale. It will difficulty. major in a major way. Yeah. I've been down this road too many times in the past. I was going to say, I have a lot of involvement in the budgeting, which I always think of you, Mel and Steve. We all have, I mean, really, all the departments have. That's what I'm saying. But at the auditor's office, we do the budget. Right, exactly. So that's my question is, yeah, I see yeah, a lot yeah. of John Murphy here too. Councilman, I, I have a question. Is it 120,000 with benefits or is that technical? No, that's without. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. 60 with benefits. I just, I'm sorry. Okay. That's the math I just did. Oh, that's yeah, 
Yeah. About according 160. to your math, 160 with benefits? Yeah, with, when you factor in insurance. Steve is not even. Perf, per FICA. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll land with PERF. Okay. So this year, FICA. to do it right now, it's about 120. About 160 with benefits? Yeah. Was it Ricky yes. Ricardo Four on the Lucy years. show? I, I, I. <laughs> I, I was going to say one other thing, too. I, I do know, and obviously it's different, solid waste, we put in a salary be up to that. And sometimes Randy would hire somebody under that. But that's not saying this. I, I understand. I was going to ask that. That's not, no, that's not saying this at all. I mean, is the possibility you hire a minimalist? That's what I was kind of I don't dis I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I'm done. I was going to say, I don't disagree with what John is saying about the other finance people throughout the county. But this person is also being asked to do other things above that. So is Cheryl Rush. So is. Uh, Abby Doyle, and so is John Murphy, and so is Sherman. Right, we're all right to do other right. Any Murphy? I think a quick be. I mean, don't mind me talking, Mr. Shipman. Just a quick comparison. We have some doctoral level employees in the county. The chief public defenders have a you know, law degree. He just got hired last Friday at one hundred and one thousand per year. Um, Bill Shalia was making about one hundred and fifty. He's got a doctoral degree. The psychologist at the JJC, who's a um, I think he's a physician, he's a psychologist, is at 125. Um, so I I can appreciate the salary level you want to come into that position to try and attract the right person. But I just think, as, as John was saying, I, I think you're going to have a little bit of a resentment. Um, a little bit, Mark? A little mm -hmm. bit of resentment, yeah. 125 for a psychologist. Then Dr. Brunsman, who's also a doctor, is at 134. I, mean, I, I see the need. I, I see the justification. I can see where you're going to be revenue neutral with your elimination of your positions and VR. I just don't want to see a upheaval with budget time, you know, from employees. And I know you got to pay to get good people. Yeah. You know, part of it is a balance of that, Mr. Jones. Um, it's pretty evident in our county with the competitiveness of wages now, and I agree a little bit here. But we're losing good people. We're not paid enough. We've been losing it, good people for years. Yeah, of but it. it's really getting bad well, now. We well, all know how really bad We've been no. trying to well, make this recently. Out. Long recently. Out. Not even recently. Not even recently. No, this, this, this has been a fight that's been going on for years. I came on 10 years ago. It, it's been a fight we've been fighting for a long time. Before fighting the I private came, sector. Leaving, leaving in the private sector like Kendra did. Well, yeah. I or mean, even other government. Yeah, right. Government. But, but we lost good health department employees to like Laporte County because their wages were. 15, I mean, South Bend pays better, Elkhart pays better. You look everywhere, and we were very low paid, and that came. That's a long history. It happened before me, uh, so it's, it goes back even maybe before Mark. You know, but we've been trying to solve it, but it's been a long slog because nobody wants to fail. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is, this is not it, this is not a new for twenty years behind Elkhart County. Yeah, in in, in adopting the option tax, paid off in twenty years ahead of us. But I always said, it's a much better financial figure than us. Right. Yeah. They were always able to offer higher salary. Right. So they have the option to have the time. Right. Which could have got a competitive disadvantage. And then when that was passed, we, we, we caught hell for that. A lot of 20 money. years later. Of 20 years later. <laughs> Mark, is there a salary you would feel comfortable for this position? I, I guess the educational requirements would requirements be kind of interesting. If we had that to go with it. You know, would you guys be willing to settle into something less than 120 so we don't cause that? I mean, exactly. the one people, the job that decided they all had doctoral degrees. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna hire a doctoral level, somebody with a PhD level. or something. Or? But I do feel that we ought to, uh, or CPA, we need to post this, we need to flesh out uh, what the educational requirements and experience requirements are. And frankly, I'm depending on Kendra, on Kim. Uh, to help do that. Is there, is there a salary that, that you would come on? I'm asking you. you, 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 you. I'm asking you. Oh, you guys have been here. So, but you're, you're the one that had the problem with the 120, so where would you be coming? That's what I'm asking. You don't have a problem with it? That's what I'm so asking. where are you at, John? You don't have a problem with it, Mark? I'm, I'm I've got to consider it, but I'm, uh, I'm considering it. Uh, so, no, I don't. I don't mean to put you on the spot. I mean, you asked Mark. I'm asking yeah. you. I'm going to consider it, uh, but if you feel more comfortable going down, we can consider that too. That's what I'm asking. Is there a lower number? No, I'm just making 70. 
Well, well Larry, sorry. I'm just, sorry, no, no, no. I guess, you know, that's 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 I'll say one more time, John, like I said, I was going to ask you that question, so I'll thank you again for speaking up. And, and it did change my perspective to a point, Steve, when you said, when you talked about the hours, you know, that the billable hours from you and Mish, right. I didn't look at it like that. So that changed my paradigm to a point. But 70, 70 versus 120. I think it's 80, important to understand, and, and I think you all see this, this is a lot more than this budgeting. And I think where the, where the savings and where the extra money come in are in the other two sections, the special projects, right? That's where that's where we're ahead of the game on things like, or a couple years ahead of where we are on things like Portage Manor. We're saving money. Um, we're creating opportunity. We're improving services because of the special projects part of this. And then the grant management and helping all these departments uh, work through grants can be a, quite a bit more money on a yearly basis for the for the county so I mean, that's that's a i mean you know who who can say if that's going to be the case or not i guess i well, say that if the person does the job it's the case that's is there, is there if is the biggest word in the dictionary is it even conceivable one person can do all of you know if <laughs> it's <laughs> if is the biggest word in the dictionary and far as i'm concerned uh a lot of the departments have done a great job with grants so you know you said yeah if the person does the job that's a that's a does that mean they can't do better i didn't say that okay. i didn't say that well i'm saying if this person helps them well, out, you know what if. And here again, well, 120 say, versus yeah. 70. They're not in the job. 120 yeah. versus 70. There's an intended it's metric not, you're gonna hold them to. I mean, that's not perfect. just me. We have a we have a really good staff in the audit now. We're fully staffed with with no, no offense to Mike or anything, but we're fully staffed with CPA type people. We have a good uh Deputy auditor, we have a, a good finance director. Yeah, so maybe we can help a little bit more. So that's what we're trying to do. We handle the grants, Dan. I mean, that's, I had to, we, we've done the, we do the grant reporting. We, we've outsourced some of it, but from, they do a nice job too. But I think the outsourcing is, is much more cost effective than hiring somebody. You know, we pay me pay fifteen or twenty thousand. I don't know exactly what you bill, but it's not that much for to do the grant, the CEPA reporting. So it seems like a good use of money. They have, I think it's a more effective way to do that part of the job. It's a small part of our job. That grant reporting. Okay, well, this person would be spending twenty percent of their time on that job. And as right. I said at the that, beginning, so it always sounds good. The twenty-three until you get into the job. It, no, it, it shouldn't take that much time. I mean, it's it's a one report per year where you accumulate the information and put it together. No, it's, it took. I don't think so. we're talking about SEPA, though. Yes. I think the SEPA may still fall outside the scope. That's really your responsibility. I, I think what we're really talking about is could the county get and manage their current grants? To your point about some of the finance directors needing to up their game. Yeah, that's true. Some I of the finance that. department directors need to up their game. And I think I think that's true for the um, IPG. They do an excellent job in every other area, you know, but the grant reporting is a little weak in, on the sum. I think that's true. I guess I'll retract part of that. But I think the CEPA is still going to fall on you, or some version of you, because you're the one that has to submit it. Would you hazard a guess and think that's because of a lack of resources to get that done? I, or I do think they're, they're too busy with. I do think the day to day. I, think you, I do think the seven four needs a finance track. Yeah. Referring well, to IPG, you say seven four. Yeah, I mean yeah. IPG commissioner. If holding, okay. If you were saying this is a seventy thousand dollar job or a seventy five thousand dollar job, or maybe even eighty thousand dollar job, I would be okay with that. But one hundred twenty thousand. I mean, it's like an that's not going to work for this county. It's not, it's not, I mean, they're going to be, I'm so upset, but like, it's going to be ridiculous. We have a lot of good finance. It's not just our office. We have a, Amy Ruby is very good. Mm -hmm. You know that. She managed, she has all kinds of grants. And Cody Sass is very good from the parts department. And Carol Rush is very good. You know, you saw her today. Well, John, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying from a perspective from years past and moving up to today. These people have been more than proven as far as going out 
and seeking grants and getting those grants. That's exactly what I'm saying. Now, can, can, can we always do better? Yeah. But any, any entity, any organization can always do better. You know, WSBT is the number one station in America, but we can be better. According to Nielsen, according to Nielsen, here it goes. I know. Call him out. Those aren't Rafael Morton numbers. Nielsen and Comscore. Let me not leave. Let me not leave Comscore out. So I'm, I'm just saying, you can always do better. But I have to give a lot of the departments over these years as far as going out and being aggressive and seeking and being successful in receiving. That's the point I'm making. Anyway. I don't think anybody's arguing with you about that. I didn't say they were, just making a point. I didn't say they were arguing, but you made the point, we can always do better. I'm agreeing with you. I'm oh, saying, 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 we can, any, any, any department, any organization can always do better, but these departments have done an outstanding job of being aggressive in obtaining, seeking and obtaining grants. All I'm saying. Okay. So if we add this person in, twenty percent of their job is to work on under under these under these um, assignments in the grant area. We can even do better than we're doing now. I'm not saying we can. I'm just saying, like Mr. Murphy is saying, at one hundred twenty thousand, the reaction from the other departments. <laughs> At budget time, I think you're still on. We've lost audio. You've also lost video. We still can't hear or see. Potentially, or at the next budget season. Um, I know, Mr. Baxmeyer, you said that you weren't certain if 
costs for Dalton and Mish would lower. Um, perhaps that's housekeeping um, or just getting an understanding of what when they need to be present or requested to be present. Um, but I think that might be a really good thing to look at after a year, see the savings then, and then you can put that toward that position. I'm going to ask you a question. You feel like at 82.4, you were fairly paid? Um, I mean, yeah. I I think that I came in not at 82.4. I came in at 75000 and with an agreement to um, incrementally bring me up to 82.4. And I think that's fair. First of all, he's putting trust in me that I have the capability to do the job. And I'm putting trust in him that I enjoy working for him. <laughs> So um, I think that it's fair, especially for a public sector and understanding understanding the climate for the county. I did my research for, before taking the position. Are there any positions equivalent that can't be union work, correct? I did. Are there any positions equivalent to this level of position that command salaries like 120 or are they in that range or? So for 120, I would, Resort. Is that your superintendent? Um, yes, that's my superintendent. Um, okay. But if you wanted to go to say maybe PHM, they had a position. I don't know if it's still posted, and that's for a finance director. Um, and that is about 110, 120. Um, but keep in mind, and I didn't see that in the job description, Mr. Baxmeyer. I know that you said that this is still kind of evolving, right? But it is so heavy on gateway submittals, DLGF, working with the um, food service and you know, also making sure that you are overseeing your staff as well. Um, PHM is very large school corporation. Um, it's, a, it's very demanding. So I, I don't know what type of deadlines this individual may or may not have, um, but I would take into consideration that as well. Mr. Dalton, do you have anything to add to this at this point? No, I mean, I'm, I'm supportive of the proposal by the commissioners. I think the seventh floor needs financial director. That seems to be a consensus. You're supportive of the position, not the sound. Not necessarily support of both. I want to be honest. I, I was part of the process where we discussed the salary, and I know of people at that same level of salary. Lake County has a finance director that's actually a little bit higher than that, so it made sense to me. That doesn't take away from finance director. Yes, yeah, Scott. Okay. Um, Our county council has a finance director. They do. Yeah, we do. The, the commissioners have one as well. So they, 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 they have one there. Commission one council. Lake likes to spend money. But that doesn't take away from your point that it may have an effect. The people who may apply for this job may very well be the people getting eighty or ninety thousand dollars already in this building. I managed to ask the metrics question. So I mean, as you as you talk about this evolving description before, I mean. Did they put a metrics piece in there somehow a way to measure or hold that person accountable to a measurement of what you expect for achievement? Certainly bring that back to the council. But it's fully considered by the full council. As well as a you know what your expectation of what you want to see them accomplish in the first year. Qualifications, that'd be great. Yeah, it's better education qualifications. Good point. So problem going over 100,000. Over 100, I would, I would be uncomfortable going over that. And probably over 80, 80, 85. Mr. Ryan, I assume any council members free to make an amendment on the floor? Sure. Amendment, get a second in. See how the rest of the council embraces it. Would you consider it at 85? Would you consider that position at 85? I question the people that we will get to apply, but I'd certainly, let's see what, if that's the will of the council, let's see what that brings in. Oh, just, I 
find it interesting. Lake County, a similar position is how much? I, I think Scott's at 132 right now. That's not apples to apples. Lake mm -hmm. County and our county. Come on, come on, Steve. Here's We've had too many conversations about this. Here's what I'll tell you. I think the council finance director in Lake County might actually be an easier job than a commissioner's finance director here. Commissioner's finance director here is like working for the mayor. But what I'm saying, I'm not saying it was in that position itself. You and I have talked many, many nights about Lake County and St. Joe County. They're very different. Thank yeah, you. they're very different. Lake County has 19 or yeah, 19 municipalities. There's a lot of Come moving on, pieces. Man. Come on, Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Steve. 19 municipalities. A lot of moving pieces. Okay. The Mishawaka controller makes about 86000 The Mishawaka city controller. That's a pretty demanding position. That was the South Bend. What's the current South Bend controller bringing in? The, he makes like 120. South Bend makes their wages are all the better. auditor and the controllers are their equivalent job. I'm not asking for myself and telling you what how it really is in the real world. Sure. We have all the same requirements to do. And I'm and I'm, I'm happily giving Abby some of them to do, so, which is great. But the wages are it's not out of the 85 is not out of line with wages in this county. The Elkhart, uh, I think it's more like 90,000 or whatever, whatever, something like that. Marshall County's way low at like 55,000 or whatever. And so we're not, we're not out, it's not Lake County. There's not everybody that's over 120,000. It's not the city of South Bend either. They, they have three times as much money as we do. Yeah. So How much that, do the Lake County councilmen make? Oh, I don't remember. It's more than 40, you guys. 40, 40, 40 some? Yeah. 40 some and they have four staff what's the their council yes they're, yeah 40, 40 <laughs> over 40 thousand i'm not i'm not advocating for us to make that just i'm just reaffirming he sure did he should sure, i'm not advocating that at all to say it's not lake county and st joe county are not apples to apples you said they have staff too they're full-time staff how about a compromise position? You set your salary to 90 at whatever we think is somewhat agreeable, 80, 85. However, on the grant fees, if they're not paying grants, maybe you make it um, put into the grant, grant, grant money brought in above and beyond, above and beyond your salary. That's a heck of an incentive. To help make up what you're trying to achieve at 120, maybe they bring in. So if they brought in 50,000, they get the a five dollars to that, right? You know, right. Whatever, 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 whatever the number says. Yeah. Whatever whatever you it's an idea. Let's, let's make sure. Is that even <laughs> is that legal? <laughs> no. Steve, can something like that be done? Not even, give me okay, so you can't actually take the grant money and pay the person. But they can have a compensation package that rewards them that's for having that landed. That's what he meant. That's no, it's legal. No, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what I mean by it. Let's take the grant money. Sure. So it is going to be difficult to unwind the fact that there are departments. You're going to have to determine what kind of grants qualify. There's already people getting grants. Sure. Maybe new grants. Right. But, but, large grants. You might imagine it might be difficult sometimes. Like that might, yeah. It's a good point. That's just compensation you want to be really yeah. careful about. You ever heard anything like that, Steve? Yeah. Yeah. There are town managers in small towns all over the state who get a percentage of what they bring in in grants. If the answer to me, this is, we do way better. We can do way better if they're a tab. Yeah, what do you mean? If they're a tab. Okay, you can it. Well, I wouldn't want to stop the regular and tons of money. If they bring in $10 million to get the yeah. uh, emergency, a heart attack, $100,000 Ten million? There's a million dollars. That's what I'm asking. Do you want to handle their? I don't want to achieve. I guess we can be a good. What's the normal percentage? We can do this. We can do this. You know, actually, no, I, I can do some research. I'm not sure. Because it's be a good problem. Town managers are bringing in millions of dollars in SRI. Right. It's got to be a very small percentage. Yeah, but I mean, total. Okay. Total tax. Okay. That's, that's a good deal. Up to right. Do grant money 
So that would serve as metric. Exactly. Exactly. Base salary at 85000 plus a percentage of new grants brought in up to $120,000 total. So, but again, what the grants? What a dollar amount. What's so about that? What does new grants mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's uh, the primary, if they're independently getting grants on their own, that would be right. Right. that. So yeah. What does yeah. Say, okay. I mean, I do grant. Now, how are they going to do that? I mean, they, they, most of the grants go to the health department or the police department or the AJC or something like that. So, uh, Mr. Murphy, would you define it then? I think, I think we have I'd maybe be, Steve I'd, working out a special I'd budget. just do a salary. But you don't like that. So you don't like that. I mean, well, I mean, Scott gets a lot of grants because they're 80-20 grants. So, you know, you'd have to exclude those too because that's Scott I'd getting those. I, maybe they could bring in a bunch of grants. I'd be... I'd be surprised if they could. So specific types of grants and percentage, it sounds like to be determined at a later date right now. That'd be kind of, everybody's talking. kind of messy, really, not quite honest. But you know, you're still you're still combining with the departments and working with them to attain these new grants, correct? With this per count that. Pardon? Say so you would count that. No, I'm saying if this new person is brought on to attain these grants, this person is still going to be working with the different departments. So that's not going to say they're going to get the grants on their own. Yeah, you're kind of messy, but you know, if you want to try that up, oh, I'm keen. So uh, here's the grants that they that might not be sure the good grants, grants that they initiate. Yeah. 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 Sources and for him to move to work with Skies, for instance, Skies. Right. 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 Yeah. So the real problem is the is the accounting though. And if you if you want to ask me what the what is the problem on the seventh floor? It's not the lack of grants, it's the lack of finance during that keeps take over a follow through accounting. A basic good old fashioned accounting, paying stuff out of the right budget, <laughs> making sure the receipts are coming in on the grants. It's it's now it's not a reflection on the guy, you know, Sky, he's out there doing his thing with right. he's great at that, but there's nobody there's nobody that's stepping up. That has the capability, so we do need a money. I agree with that. That would make our job in the auditor's office much better because we're having to try to do stuff behind the scenes to help the seventh floor, but we don't understand exactly all that they do. So that would be great to have a finance director. Primarily, I think you outside of your statutory reporter duties as a daughter. Yeah, so we, we're trying to help them, yeah, but that's the main problem, really. Yeah, I think. So it Great. sounds like we've come to some close to an agreement here. You think? If we can <laughs> word it. There's that if word again. You know, you knock me over the head about that. If we can word it right here, we can get the wording. So with the wordsmith. Are you so, staying with the grant percentage incentive or are you going away from that? Before I so wordsmith for you. What I'm hearing is so I wrote down 85,000 plus a percentage of new sourced grants up to 120,000. That's what I wrote down, but I have no wordsmith and I haven't slept for two days. So somebody help me here. So somewhere in between, they get up, up to maximum. No, you, you, know, you got to say the um, part about with that percentage, you know, right. what percentage they've been getting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To get to that, you said they get to 120. Brian, you're pretty good wordsmith. See you out there. Are you? Yeah, Brian. Got any ideas He's on that? that <laughs> He's Brian. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. In English, Brian, not French. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> still, still, I'm I'm just past Hammond on my way back home. So let me get my pen and paper out. What's going on? <laughs> Hey, Brian. So I think maybe the, the, you need to go away and do a little more work. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I appreciate the dialogue. I really yeah. do. I really do. So again, metrics, qualifications. How do we get yeah. to a, a salary that's going to be attractive yet isn't going to cause you know war three in the county city? Exactly. That sounds a lot like the recommendation without without recommendation. Without recommendation. I don't know about that. Well, I say hell in committee too, because I mean, it just seems like 
a lot of discussion that has happened back, which is very good, but I think there needs to be more. Well, I mean, I think I was going to close to you. Know, it's a lot of questions. I mean, you, 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 hey, um, the old saying, one of many. Well, it sounds like on the qualifications piece, it sounds like commissioners are not, are trying not to hem themselves in specifically and it sounds like we're we've got a general idea on the compensation so can we move it forward and then the commissioners come to us in 14 days with the specifics hopefully before 14 days <laughs> so, oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course. <laughs> so we're not you know going yeah we have time to review on the yeah. between now and so we can exactly next week. speed yeah yeah, yeah. Some discussion between now and our public hearing. So that each, so you'll we'll get information from them before the public hearing, but we're moving it forward so we can continue the discussion at the public hearing. I'm in favor of doing. You making the opposite motion? I, I just think in two weeks, and I guess it really hinges on when the commissioners get back to us. Uh, I'd hate for them to get back with us a day before the meeting, then we just go out there and make a decision. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I, you know, I think if we can do By the end have the another meeting, session right. like this, not out on the floor, and really iron this thing out, I think we've made a lot of progress tonight. There again, great dialogue back and forth. So, you think it's realistic? You guys come up with something in a week? Right? Interest of full disclosure, I will not be there two days. So. Anything to give you would have to be well before then. You won't be there. You mean at the our council meeting? But Derek and Deb will be presenting. Oh. Yeah, we would get something here before then. Yeah. Could we? Uh, do would be to. Um, Okay. So we delay it a month. Is that going to make a big deal? I'd rather, not, I'd rather uh, not, but I'd rather do it right and do it. Well, I say we out. just lost somebody who we need to we need to move to see what, to get that right. We just lost a uh, person, Kendra, Kendra. 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 But you just said she's going to be. You'd rather not put it off, but you'd rather do it right. Can you just say that? I can say that. We can, so you're saying we can move it forward and do it right? Is that what you're saying? That's not what you were saying. That's what I heard. No, I, that's not what I heard. <laughs> no? Uh -uh. We'll try our best to get you if you you're, keep, it, keep it in two weeks. We will do our best to get you the additional information in advance. But I also heard um, that's important to say, get this group back together again to iron out the details. How can we do that if it's not at a committee meeting? Great segue into we get to have a special council meeting because we need to do that. We'll yeah, ask about a, a resolution if, if uh, Chairman would consider that. You do both. What are you suggesting? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just totally changed topics on me. I do. I, but it's kind of dumb to keep saying if we can get together, how will we get together before yeah, the two weeks? But I was thinking that Joe and I were going to have a little. Well, yeah. does the council want to hold a special meeting next Tuesday night? Oh, and then information by next Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I leave next Tuesday. I'm not going to be here. Yeah. I retire on Friday. Friday. Oh, yeah. And my wife and I have a anniversary trip. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So, we'll be on the 4th and we'll be back on the 14th. Oh, what? Okay. I'll be honest with you. If this is no reflection on my buddy Derek, my 30 year buddy Derek, no reflection on Deb. But you've been the one orchestrating this thing. If you're not going to be here, that's even more reason for you know not to rush it. And you're saying yourself, 
You don't want to put it off, but you want to do it right. If you're, if you're not going to be here, you orchestrated this whole thing. It's just me. Because if you're going to be gone. Yeah, like I said, that's no reflection on Derek or Rick Flux. Wait a minute. Mr. Gall. Yes, sir. Um, you worked with Mr. Maxmeyer on this. Has Mr. Dieter been equally involved in the. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Derek's been very involved. You're in on that, Mr. Baxmar. So. If he has been involved, if I'm wrong, Danny, but if we move this forward and we get two weeks down the road and nothing came in or <coughs> there's no reason we'll just to table it, table it or send it, even send it or back. Send it back. Right? You send it back, then it's got to go back. To but if we don't move it out tonight, then we can't do anything. Right. If it stays in committee tonight, nothing happens. We have full on goes to full council on the 11th in Haven for 30 days or 60 days or whatever length of time it could be asked to that. And there again, why does it have to happen on April 11th? Do I have the wrong day? I'm just looking at the date. No, no I'm, saying, I'm saying why does it have to happen at the April meeting? This this is a, a, a you know a new position. A lot of thought needs to go into this. Well, well you know. it's often, you know, people, other council members would complain that we were trying to add a new position before budget time. So that's I'm generally point. sympathetic to that unless it was revenue neutral. I always well, this is this is this is not going to be revenue revenue neutral. Who said it would be revenue neutral. every year? Yeah. It is revenue neutral in 2023 and unless you replace those voter registration people, it's revenue neutral going forward. Yeah, say that again. Revenue, going revenue forward, neutral because right. those four people don't exist in the voter registration office anymore. Unless you guys decide for some reason to put them back into that office during the budget session coming up, it would be revenue neutral going forward as well. I've always supported if you cut people to do something, I've always supported that way back. If you made changes, then I I was okay outside of budget season. But real trouble outside of budget season with additional appropriations. But if you could do it in a revenue neutral way, we've all been very consistent on that for, yes, for many, quite a few years. years. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing no more comments, may I have a motion on Bill 28 24? Motion to send it with no recommendation. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. Show of hands, please. All those in favor say aye. Or show your hand. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't vote. Oh, yeah. All those um, uh, against, raise your hand, please. Vote in favor. Just forward, no recommendation. Bill number 44 23 Q. I have a motion on Bill 44 23 Q. Motion is done with no recommendation. I have a second. Mm -hmm. We have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. Question, Dan. What about? I didn't hear Tanner vote. He's not on the committee. He's not. Sure. That's right. <laughs> okay. We need a show of hands. All those in favor. All those opposed. Sure. All right. And I vote in favor. So it moves forward with no weapon. Mr. President, back to you. Thank you. Uh, we have nothing on the rules committee tonight. We do have. Well, we did have. We did have a presentation, but Ann had to leave. Oh, she was here to present on the housing trust fund. She asked if she could present after next committee meeting. Uh, next, yeah, yeah. She so had. She had to leave. But she had to be somewhere okay. at seven. So real quickly, then, uh, any other business that comes before us? I think we. Yeah, um, Mr. Max, my and myself. Dr. Fleming and Joe attended the Sugar House meeting last week at the District Museum. Spoke to Senator Mitchler, Wesco, Pesca, and Linda Rogers. And over the weekend, we spoke to Senator Nostowski and Marion Bauer, who recommended that if we really want to see an increase in our cap funding, which is the Residence Repair Assistance Program for Portage Manor residents, no matter who is the eventual owner of Portage Manor, that we be great if we had support from the council and the commissioner to handle the resolution. Commissioner this morning passed a resolution that we did that. 
Um, there might even be more funding or other funding out there for closed matter, according to what Senator Mishra said. Uh, he's looking at Center and God beyond. So, April, April 11th, they're almost at the 11th hour in the in, in that mass, uh, legislature. So, so what do you I, think? I, that you, 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 you disagree, Joe. Right? No, I agree. I mean, if we no. came over, if they said it would mean a lot of there was, you know, probably support for us. They want some support from the commissioners and the council that helps the state look at that. Oh, the, the county is really behind this. Our cap or any other, or cap or any other funding source is a who's adamant about that. I mean, they are looking at trees, but it would be helpful. If we could. So, yeah, some kind of a resolution saying we ask the, you support that. We ask the state to support that. Council thoughts on that? Well, your so your analysis to what they're saying to you was it's potential. It's potential. It's but potential. You know, they they wouldn't commit. They wouldn't look at it. But okay. they would. They would. Uh, they, but they were very adamant yeah. that. It will look very good if yeah. you have that unified support. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it doesn't resolution. happen this year. You're right, exactly. exactly. Because no matter what happened. They, they couldn't believe the art that we had been raising. Right. Almost, almost 15 years. Yeah. Almost 15 now. But let it, the, you know, the, they, don't, they, they don't realize that because that, okay. that comes under FSSA. Yeah. So FSSA has to fight for that. Well, they haven't fought for that in 15 years. So the, so the, the so state legislature. I need to ask a question about the art cap. Is, is the rate facility specific and no, it's different no. all across the state no, or it's no. one rate across the head. Right. So how would they not know? The state knows, the FSSA who administers the board, the legislator. The legislators aren't aware of this. Never Mr. Really explained it as, he said, we just go to the FSSA and ask them, how much money do you want in the budget this year? And they tell them a dollar amount. Then they distribute it with all the funds. But uh, 54 hour consulting today probably should be closer to 70 bucks a day. Well, that, that would make Portage Manor whole. I mean, it probably just hasn't gone. I mean, Portage Manor is the place that gets the most of the RCAP funding from anywhere, isn't it? They get 25% of the state, 25% of the RCAP patients in Indiana. Are I thought I heard it was a majority there than anywhere else. I mean, maybe it's your concentration wise. Yeah, probably maybe, like, maybe it's just because we haven't lobbied hard enough for it in the past. Yeah, Robin was yeah. working on it. Yeah. yeah. They're staying 15 years. And so the, the commissioners passed this resolution today. I can forward it to you guys. I mean, there just aren't that many people that get it. So, you know, there's not a lot of people pushing for it. Right. Probably if we have 100 of them here, that's a quarter. Right. I mean, there's not a quarter of people that can. So. Correct. Yeah. So, Jamie, can you get up the resolution? I can. can Mark, can you? Mark, can you? Can you, can you yeah, could you do that? Yeah. For some thing, I think it's important. I think all of us, you know, we've had some pretty contentious discussions about this. You and I were trying to convince each other the other day. I wasn't contentious. No, no, no. We were trying to convince each other. There was it was also contentious, but that's okay because that's government. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. Do you? Well, I what do you want? I still say uh, we were. Uh, no, no, you and I were. We were just sitting there talking to each other, and I had a couple of constituents giving a hard time about not being focused on what they were saying. All right. We, we want to get it out of the county's hands, and if we can, if we can, if somebody's willing to take that and keep all those folks there together, and can make that work, wonderful. Right? I think we all agree. Can we say something like that in the resolution? If we're looking for a solution that takes this out of the county's hands, and that we want to see some entity that can make this work. So that they understand kind of where we are oh, to the state, to the state, in this resolution state, that that be in there so they understand that we're not talking about, because I think that's, at least that was part, no matter, part of the conversation. No matter who runs the facility moving forward, the RCAP would be very helpful to that yeah, person. Right. I, under, I, I, yeah, I don't know if that, I don't, I don't see your point. I don't know if that's necessary. I mean, Joe was at the meeting Sunday too. Or, or, I think, I think that uh, someone has got this point. Was just we need to show that unification that we we would we yeah, as just counter the committee to see this fund increase. Just that's really what the goal is. Right. So, so, so it should be one thing. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Just to show us the Oh, not a commitment to any. Okay. So we can get that done, right? I don't know if we can get that done by the 11th, Jimmy. Yeah. And so I will try to work on that tomorrow the next day. Send the draft. 
Yeah, I hate right. to. Sooner the better. I hate to put pressure yeah, on you. Right. Yeah, right. I'm right. not trying to put pressure on you. But I got one more thing. Is there, is there any way we could maybe uh, meet before the 11th? And so that's there's been a reason. It doesn't sound like no. it. The commissioners put it together Everybody's overnight. It's pretty yeah. No, I'm wondering if it's this week. Maybe we wouldn't want to get together this week. Hey, for, Rebecca, hold on for just a, a minute meeting. because we're, we're being asked. Okay. We're being asked, I think. Are we being asked to consider pulling no. what 900,000 plus Thursday and taking a vote, pulling that off of the table in April and, and for the staff bonuses yes. and, and uh, moving that for Portage Manor? But talk me through, talk us through the process oh, here yeah. so we're all clear. That happened this morning, too. Well, yeah. So if the council decides to do this, at the March public hearing, we tabled it for 60 days. I think Steve, tell me if I got any of this wrong. The advertisement was for the like 2.7 million. Right. So what the council did, the council can undo, decide to going to untable it, untable part of it, or just leave it. So if the council decides to untable it and approve or appropriate or earmark whatever the proper terminology is, some of that money that could be done on the 11th um, i would either put it on the agenda or address it under old business but um conceptually a simple majority of the council can do and then undo this is the first time i've come across something where well, we're tabling it for 60 days now we're going to untable it 30 days in or untable part of it 30 days in so I think it would be cleaner if there was unanimous agreement or unanimous consent to do that if if that's the pathway you're going. I do think there's a strong argument that a simple majority could still do it, nevertheless. Um, if, uh, if the desire is to do something with other monies, we're at least a month away because we've got to go through advertising. That'll be the main meeting. A little messy about all is it? So we tabled that for 60 days, and the commissioners had a resolution last week that right. said we commit the 2.7 to whoever is the new eventual owner right. of ARP money to we, we commit that money to them as operational money, you know, if they take the facility over. But then we Are you, I'm getting mixed messages from commissioners on whether they actually committed 2.7 million to a the, the, phrase, the phrase is in the yeah, resolution. Yeah. So they did do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, just, last just, week. just mind you, they don't have the ability. They don't have the ability. Yeah. We have one of the it's, it's your one. authority, not theirs. So the one that passed this morning was uh, of that 2.7. They said so they would give away with the building or they recommended people to make the building. They asked of 2.7 to earmark some of that money for the employee retention bonuses. Right. And in the original. The original appropriation that we got that we tabled a certain percentage of that was for retention. Yeah, eight hundred thousand. Yeah. How to come to nine hundred thousand? Still, yeah, for, for, yeah. for, for like yeah. everything, almost our seven. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Well, it sounds like from what I'm talking to Carl, I mean, we've got to address this. Oh yeah, so we had a meet. We had a kind of special meeting yesterday yeah. at four thirty, and and they we can't afford to have the nursing no. staff walked right now. So, and that will well, need some kind of a commitment that we can do that. So, but the other question is necessarily haven't spent. It's but, the, but the question I have, the other part of the commission is if somebody is proposing a business plan, whether it's one, two, three companies to take over, or as many they're backing that into their business plan, but they would get. Yeah, you have to pay the, the bonus to the nurse. It doesn't matter if we're paying the bonuses or they're paying the bonuses on that 2.7. Some of them, I mean, you know, what I'm saying? I, I think we might have do an additional appropriation to make that 2.7 number whole, whoever's you know, down the road. 2.7 million. I don't think that any new owner saw that they would be paying any bonuses because that, that was that was a county that. commitment, right? So, uh, so because those employees will leave whether. And that was based on the premise that it could take two to three years. Yeah. And that money would be paid on days after they last paid the president left. So we're not going to spend 800000 of bonuses. And Dr. Ayala first came up and started talking about taking the place. There was no commitment to giving her $2.7 million. Mm -hmm. But the so commissioner passed a re resolution saying that they would give her or anybody to take the facility. That resolution is not binding unless we say yes, correct? 
Well, but if somebody's making a business model or a business plan to consider apportionment, and that was part of the thing they're factoring that in. They definitely are. But, but the, that, yeah, you got to get those well, nerves. I mean, the new people are coming well, in. We have to do that. Yeah, we've had. No, I mean, I, 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 I mean, Mark's, I mean, the new not, Mark's just, not arguing. Yeah, yeah I, I think I'm coming in another eight hundred thousand yeah. probably to supplant. This is good content. Things can change all the time. We know we need to spend this. So we have money. We might as well do that and see where we are when we get to it. somebody giving us an idea. I, I can't remember. even financially. Well, I don't think yeah. disagreeing that we need to pay that money now. Yeah. So, does the council want to take that step? Do we have unanimous support to take that step at the April 11th meeting? That's what I'm asking everybody. Those nurses, they got to know. Yeah. How do they do the ARP? Yeah, they got to know. Yeah. Yeah, we got to give them that assurance. Yes. Yes. Raphael? Yes. Mark? Oh, yeah. I'm also thinking we need to find out the worry of the commissioner's resolution that created the whole first manner task force and the money they were committing to whoever takes over the building. I know that was reported in the press, too. They need to clarify that, definitely. Because it that creates confusion, right? We, well, we, yeah, we, we first we have the yeah. first two point seven. We've got that divided out. Part of its bonuses. Now they're saying this. They need to clarify this. Those can bonuses you, need uh, to come out of ARP money. Whether it's resolution or ordinance or whatever, can you uh, come up with the documentation to get us a vote to move the bonus money out of uh, ARP for the April eleventh? Well, all you need to yeah. do is amend the existing bill. Right. Okay. Yeah. So well, that originated. <laughs> Yeah. Either we have a bill, it would just need to be marked up, <clears throat> as, and they would have to vote to amend it, right? And that includes the FICA, the PERP, and the health insurance piece. So it's going to be a little bit over 900. Do you want John to write it up as amended? Send it around? That. Yeah, yeah, that would be really good. good. I'll send any further comments on that. I'm going to give you a little bit of that language just so we know what the commissioner okay. said. Okay. In the other. He's telling me. Look, one quick question. Where'd you get your, those beautiful, where'd you get your outfit? <laughs> you're too kind. <laughs> you are, you're the best dressed man in South Carolina. <laughs> See what this commissioner said out of the 2.7 million. They said in the resolution they passed unanimously. They said, sorry, right. 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 Property, the commercial property, the commercial building. If approved by the Senior County Council, County Board of Commissioners, reserve an additional 2.7 million of American Rescue Plan funds to the community member exclusively to assist with operations of Public Manor. So I'm just saying, if we that, that's what says, that's what point five of their resolution says. Mm. I mean, do they have the legal authority to do that? Yeah. Well, they can pass the resolution. Yeah. They the pass council it. doesn't have to. Doesn't have to. So if approved by the Pinto County Council, Pinto County Board of Commissioners would support it. But I'm thinking anybody who's looking at a business plan, whether they're, it's Doctor Apollo or yes. well, they, they're they're factoring 2.7 million in group if they take that property over. So I just think we may have to make that up, or we out of out of what was committed. I talked to Derek about this, Mark, when I saw that. I talked to him and I said, this is not, I don't think, I think you need to rethink what you're doing here because we've, we've divided this out in different areas. And he agreed. I, I just think that was another one of those situations where they should have thought through what they were saying a little better. So I think you're probably going to get some kind of clarification. But I think anybody who's like working out. I understand out what you're saying. Plans, yeah, they're, they're under the impression they're getting the building. And 2.7 million and the operating reserve. So they don't have it delineated out. So clarification needs to be sooner rather than later. Well, there's, there's other people. I mean, there's more right. than one person on the interest. Right. Do it. Yes. Right. 
but they're fully amended. Would you be willing to make sure that they understand that clarification is sooner rather than later? May, may, may I interrupt or interject a thought on this really quick? Uh, sorry, but I was thinking that if the transition or transfer, <clears throat> excuse me, transfer of property was not successful, that the bonuses remain retention bonuses. However, it could be reworded since a potential transfer of property and operation at Portage Manor could be successful, that those funds be reserved for a sign-on bonus uh, because there is an impact to these employees transitioning from a county paid job with county benefits to a private job. Uh, that's just a thought as, as a way that we could structure that and keep it included in the overall 2.7 and allow for the flexibility of what may happen with this property. Yeah. I do think Courtney addressed that. Yeah, that's that's it did not sound feasible, their perspective. No. I think the employee's position is if we're not going to get the bonus, we're going to start quitting. Yep. Yep. That's right. needs to be... Thank you for that clarification. I was unaware. I try to. Anything else? So we'll take these up at our we'll take these April, up at the 11th. April 11th meeting, both lead resolutions. Or, I'm sorry, the resolution and the amendment. That's right. I'm saying it's an amendment. Do you want that under old business or do you want that on the agenda? You have a Jamie and Peter. <laughs> when I understand the ramifications of it. <laughs> I, think it makes sense. Yeah, it I just wanted to apologize to my fellow councilmen. I have not slept for two straight days. And that's why at the beginning of the meeting, I'm just, I've just been in a fog for a while. So I do apologize for being, you know, it's, you know, it's a situation I have to deal with and with it, but it's. Don't worry, we're no signs. Dan said you made a Thank you. Thank you. Can you think of any other? Right. Any way of us doing that resolution in the center? Uh, the one that the state legislature gives. Because is there any way we can? No, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. we have to have at least forty-eight hours 